Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel for what feels like the first book video in literally forever. I think it's been honestly over a year and a half. The summer has been such a good one for reading. I've read eight books so far and nine including the one I'm reading now and overall they've been so so good and so I wanted to share them with y'all and also hear your thoughts on them if you've read them. There's definitely some new favorites in here so hopefully you find like a good book rec for the next month. Before we get started with the reviews though, I just wanted to mention that I am thinking of opening a virtual book club. Basically I really love book clubs. I love hosting them. I love going to them um, and I wanted to open one for sort of like this little community if um, there are any readers here who also want to join and discuss books um, in our free time. The format I'm thinking now is a monthly meeting on Zoom that works for all of our sort of like rough time zones um, for like 45 minutes to an hour talking about one book a month and the book club is going to be centered around translated um, literature and maybe even more specifically translated writers of color. Um, um, mostly because I think there's other translations that are, you know, in general pretty accessible and popular already. But I wanted to sort of discuss and highlight translations that may, might not have as much press or maybe people haven't gotten the chance to get their hands on it or read it yet. Um, and I thought that would be super fun. I think there's just so much great literature out there in that category that doesn't get enough um, press and attention. So if you're interested, um, I'll leave a link to a Google like sort of interest form down below if you want to fill that out and I'll get in touch with you separately um, and obviously keep the rest of you guys updated on the channel about how the book club is going. It's a little tentative right now, but I'll gauge interest and then hopefully we'll get it organized within the next few months. Very exciting. With that, let's get into the review of all the books I've read this summer from June to August. The first one is a short story collection called The Office of Historical Corrections by Danielle Evans. This is a fairly contemporary collection. I think it came out in like 2020 um, and the stories feel that way too. Like they're dealing with a lot of contemporary issues that we've seen um, that are very like relevant to uh, politics today. There's a real range of characters and stories in here but overall they mostly all deal with race, class, and gender, um, specifically like being a black woman in contemporary America and also address a lot of controversies and issues that have come up around those topics in the past couple of years and I just think she's done it in such a, like a funny relatable sharp way like the characters feel really real it doesn't feel necessarily stilted and she manages to balance like dark humor with uh, anger and grief and all of these emotions that come with being in a system that is unjust and unfair. I'd really recommend if you like a strong narrative voice, um, if you're trying to interact with a wide range of characters and situations and you're interested in sort of issues of the current day. I do think that some stories were stronger than others. Um, my personal favorites were Alcatraz and Anything Could Disappear. Um, and personally, the like no novella that the title t is named after after, um, the Office of Historical Corrections was not my favorite. I do feel like there's something for everyone throughout the book, so if you want sort of a read that will go fast, um, will make you think, um, but will also make you laugh, um, I would definitely recommend it. In terms of writing, I think I would give it a 3.5. The next book I read is The Dark Side of Skin by Jefferson Tenorio, translated by Bruna Dantes Lobato, who I met at Breadloaf over the summer, and she is an incredible writer and translator, and so I was really excited to read this book. This is a contemporary Brazilian novel that sort of deals with systematic racism and police brutality in Brazil, and it's told from the perspective of a son, but actually the story is mostly about his mom and dad, um, which I thought was really well done and sort of kind of powerful. The writing and the translation is just unbelievable. I feel like it's very simple but um, effective and emotional and um, it makes you feel just everything that the characters are feeling. I also think it's really important and cool to read about identity and race in other um, you know tradition, literary traditions. So in this case of Brazil, I feel like there's a lot of similarities and parallels but also a lot of differences to the US and I feel like this hopefully allows us to broaden our discussion of these topics. Um, um, so I feel like it was really interesting. Yeah, if you're interested in sort of like family stories, um, especially father and son relationships, and also beautiful writing, I would definitely recommend this one. The only thing is that I felt like it was a little harder to get to know the main character specifically. I feel like that's the main reason that I didn't like absolutely love it. Um, and in terms of rating, I would give it a 3.5 as well. The next book I read is Time Shelter by Georgie Gospel. 
Kodinov, Kaspotinov. And also I just want to say normalize reading books from the library on booktube, please. I held on to this um, so that I could show you guys the physical copy, but it is not mine. This is translated from the Bulgarian by Angela Rodel and it won the uh, International Booker Prize, I think in 2023. I genuinely think this is one of the most interesting books I've read in a very long time. And I think I'll be thinking about it for honestly just like years to come because the concept is so interesting. It centers around a main narrator who witnesses the founding of like a time shelter and they're basically these centers that are created for dementia patients who want to live in the past and the entire space is decorated and exists exactly like that decade in the past. I feel like that's such an interesting and sort of like cute concept at the beginning but then it turns from personal to political really quickly and it sort of goes into our sort of international nostalgia and how um, in some ways like destructive that's been. It doesn't necessarily mention modern politics but it just feels very relevant to now where a lot of countries especially in the west are romant romanticizing like a better time when they were more powerful and all this stuff um, and so basically there ends up being like time shelters across the world and it kind of sort of slowly takes over Europe in this case and I thought that was so interesting and like I mentioned just incredibly timely to what we're living through right now but it's not just theoretical i feel like it was also there was an emotional heart to it i really liked the main character and sort of the voice and um i just thought the concept was so interesting and so well developed that i could sit with it for a very long time and i think i read through it relatively quickly but i just have been thinking about it even after i finished it um so i would 100 percent recommend this to anyone who finds the concept interesting um also wants to just read a fantastic translation and sort of see like a you know kind of funny unique character at the center of it bear in mind it's definitely not like a realistic novel um and it kind of goes a little wacky but i think that's really fun yeah i would give this a 4.5 the next book is Real Life by Brandon Taylor, and this is a contemporary novel um, about Wallace, who is a grad student in um, the Midwest, I believe. It's kind of about him and his friends and his journey um, as a black queer man in a predominantly white and Midwestern space, and also his journey of kind of coming to terms with past trauma and also like the really like dull sort of like every day of grad school life sapping a lot of energy out of him. Yeah, I had high hopes for this. I think people compared it to a lot of books that I've enjoyed before um, and they said that it was just really well written and on, to be honest it was kind of a painful read for me like it fell quite flat and I think it's because I really just do not like like the MFA style of overwriting where you use like metaphors and similes for honestly no reason um and I felt like that was so present in this book book and so I got really tired of the writing pretty fast and then I think there was sort of like a constant tension throughout the novel which is good but it was just just never like released or I'm um, not that it has to be resolved but I just didn't feel like it really went anywhere and I think the biggest problem with it is that I just did not like and connect to the main character because I think the main character doesn't open himself up to the reader um, and feels kind of a little pretentious and just closed off throughout um, and that's totally fine at the beginning but I feel like that has to change and it just never really did for me. This is not my favorite, I personally wouldn't recommend it um, and if you've read it I would love to hear your thoughts. I do know some people have really loved it though so obviously to each their own um, but yeah I gave this a 2. The next book I read is called Ind Indeterminate Inflorescence by Lee Song Bok and it's translated by Anton Herr, um, who I love, obviously. This is actually quite different from the other books. This is like a collection of little phrases and aphorisms related to writing poetry from one of like South Korea's most famous poets. And so you can see here, there's like a couple, like four or five on each page. And I just find that this is so nice to read like a couple a day before you start your day or maybe at the end of the day um, and just kind of get inspired about writing and creativity and all of those things but I think I would recommend this not just to writers but for anyone who is doing anything creative I feel like there's a lot of just poignant and important things said here about creation and the process of creating um, that I feel like are really helpful for me especially someone who kind of feels like blocked a lot in that way and also the translation is incredibly beautiful and so I would definitely recommend this yeah I gave this a 4.5
And the next book that I have is Jacob's Room by Virginia Woolf. Um, this is a beautiful edition from the Waterstones um, Gower Street, and I think it's just exclusive to them. So if you're ever in London near that Waterstones, definitely pick it up. I love it so much. But anyways, the book itself is sort of like a wacky little novel. I think it was Woolf's first novel, and you can kind of tell um, because it has a lot of her characteristics, but they're just not done to like, I would say like the extent that she can do them. It has her usual sort of like beautiful lyrical language that I really love and just like completely stunning imagery. Again, I'll put like a quote here as an example, but I just love her writing. I mean, she is absolutely one of my favorite writers of all time. I just think no one does like writing like her. No one talks about being alive like her, honestly. But the novel itself centers around a character named Jacob, who is a young man. It's not told through just his perspective. It's also from a lot of the other women around his life, his mom, um, women who love him, etc, etc. And all in all, it's just kind of like a picture of a person through the eyes of other people. And also because it's Wolf, of course, it's talking about gender, sort of like the different expectations at the time and different possibilities for men and women, which I think is always really, you know, interesting to read. Um, the main issue is that there's just really no plot and that's fine but I do feel like there's just lacks a little bit of a thread that holds the whole thing together and I also think Jacob is still quite elusive to us by the end like I don't really know who he is again maybe that was the point of the whole book but I just felt like that was a little frustrating as someone who stuck with it you know for a while I also found it interesting because I think that Wolf was sort of like judgier of women in this work than some of her later works I think there's a lot of like just like straight up savagery about um, some of the woman characters in this book and their like incompetence and shallowness and things like that, which I mean valid. I just think it's interesting because her commentary on gender definitely I think has evolved throughout her writing, but I am very partial. It's still Wolf. I still think her sentences and phrasing and everything and descriptions are just so stunning and they stay with me for a very long time. And so even despite all of its flaws, I would definitely recommend Jacob's Room to anyone who is a Wolf fan. I'd probably read Mrs. Dalloway to the Lighthouse Orlando first before reading this one if you haven't read Wolf before, um, but again, completely recommend it and I would give this one a four. The next book is Difficult Loves by Italo Calvino. This is another collection of short stories um, by Calvino throughout his career. I think the title is really fitting, uh, even though there's such a wide range of stories in here. The connecting thread is definitely love and stories about all, all kinds of love, really. And yeah, I think this honestly has solidified my love for Calvino's writing after reading If on a Winter's Night a Traveler last um, winter. It's also his translators, who this one was translated by William Weaver, Archibald Colquhoun, and Peggy Wright. They just do such a great job of capturing this incredibly unique and amazing style uh, where he makes very realistic stories feel just like slightly more intense and dramatic than they actually are, almost to the point where you're like, it feels like a slightly like a modern folktale, but then the stories are very much grounded in like real characters that feel very real and they're not cliche in any way either. I realized through reading this book and experiencing Calvino's writing that my taste in books is really, that I just really love writing that sort of elevates like everyday experiences and makes them feel more intense and dramatic, which is probably why I love Wolf. Um, I love Baldwin, Morrison, and now Calvino. So I feel like this is really exciting. Um, it's also just because this writing is fantastic. Again, I'll put a quote here. I just don't think this is so exciting to find a new writer that I love. There's so much heart behind every one of these stories um, and so much love for the characters, but then his writing is also so beautiful that you kind of get that like, what I, um, what one of my teachers used to call like the belly drop feeling where you read a sentence and it's just so stunning that you kind of have to sit with it for a bit. And yeah, I feel like there's just a great variety of stories in here. I think um, there's something for everyone to enjoy and it went by really fast um, because each one is quite short and so you can just like read one and then go do your thing and read another one later. Just one thing I wanted to mention was that there was one story that I personally would skip over if I were to read this again and I wish kind of had like a trigger warning um, of about assault. I'll put the name of it up here. I think it's like the second or third story in the collection as well, which is very unfortunate. It's just a story told from the eye of someone committing assault and I just felt like that was not really necessary. Um, so if you don't want to read that, which um, you know I wouldn't either, uh, maybe just skip over that story when you pick up this book. I definitely think it's worth checking out as a work on its own. And yeah, I would give this a 4.5 and yeah, I'm just really excited to read other Calvino works in the future. I feel like a new writer has kind of come into my canon of like writers. I will read basically everything that they write. So I'll update you guys on Calvino. Last but not least, I did want to include this for any people watching who can read in Korean. This is Hajimala Wonanitanayo by 
Anton Her, and it's a collection of essays about his journey as a literary translator from of Korean to English. Um, and he's just incredible. His voice is really funny, but he also gives a lot of good advice for anyone who is trying to just sort of carve their own path and do their own thing. Um, and I felt like it was really comforting and inspiring. And yeah, if you can read in Korean, I would definitely check Anton's essays out. And then I just wanted to mention Boulder by Ava Baltazar, translated by Julia Sanchez, because this is the book I'm reading right now. I honestly really want to finish it so I could include it in this video, but I just haven't gotten around to it before the big move and everything. So I will definitely keep you guys updated on what I think about this. It's probably a good time to mention that I do monthly book recaps on my Instagram, which I'll link here. So hopefully you'll see the review of this there too. But I've been really enjoying it so far. I'm like 50 pages in. It's a story about a woman who works on a ship and then falls in love with a different woman and then I think stuff happens in their relationship and I still haven't gotten there yet but the writing is very like direct and intense and has like a lot of dark humor um, and the book is really short so if you're looking for just kind of like a fun interesting wacky sort of I think pretty gripping read um, I would really recommend this one and then we can talk about it together hopefully so yeah so those are all the books for this summer I hope you found something in there that sounds interesting and that you would like to read on your own let me know some of your favorite reads from this summer and if you think you'll check any of these out down below. And also just a reminder to fill out the interest form if you are interested in joining the virtual book club. I'm actually so happy to be making book content again. I'll definitely be back for sort of like seasonal reading recaps and also hopefully book rec videos. So subscribe if you want to see more of that. And yeah, thanks for watching as always and I will see you in the next one. Bye!